about a two minute trailer, two minute and eight seconds. Let's jump into it. Madden 22. <laughs> All right. So, uh, God damn it. Looks the same. It looks the same. And, you know, one thing that I pay attention to in, in, in these in trailers for, for sports in particular, and one thing that is certainly specific to Madden, especially in the last, like, five or six years, is the reliance on animation, like, locked-in canned animations, like... Those are the things that irritate me to no end about what the problem is with this game. I think that is a huge problem is that they have these animations that are canned to give the game this. I mean, it's for it's for it's for the sake of just the look, the aesthetic to make it feel or look like it's realistic. They have these animations that are purposed and they lock in more often than not, two players, so you're. it doesn't really feel like you're in control of your player. It, that's missing. And when I watch this, and I, and, I, and I try to, like, in my mind, analyze whether or not these are, like, canned animations, it just, it constantly looks like these animations are canned. Let me turn this down. You know, and then, okay, let's start from here. This, okay, why is this something that needs to be presented in the trailer? I'm looking at this. I know what this is. This is what's going to be in, you know, franchise mode on your weekly, you know, update board where it's going to show social media interactions with, with you know, famous names in the sports world and uh, the conversations between these fans about who's going to win the game, who's got the most rushing yards, who's got the most touchdowns, who's thrown interceptions, yada, 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 yada. We see that in all the sports games. Why is that something that really needs to be a focus of a trailer when EA had to know? They had to know that this trailer for this game needed to show like some, like you needed to show something like tangible in, in, in way of how they've changed the game or tried to improve the game uh, in the gameplay department, with the sizzle reels we see all the time. We don't care about the sizzle reel. The sizzle reel looks like every other Madden game. It's You're using the in-game engine, but you're just using highlight angles to make it look great. I mean, okay, all of this is aesthetics. These are all things that have no real... And I'm wondering here, because I saw this, and this is a quick side side sidebar. If this is right, then they messed up the design of a plane. The wings look like they're backwards here. I don't know. Maybe this is just a different uh, kind of, of fighter jet that the military uses where the wings are on backwards. And it still flies. These are things that are aesthetics, which is nice. I mean, fine, whatever. You have the aesthetics in that regard, but these are also in and of themselves just like cutscenes. They're not actually like in real time necessarily uh, within the game itself, but we see that in every game trailer all this stuff here Which yes the graphics they look nice here, but it doesn't really look different in any way from what we've already seen How does this show me whether or not? This game is better than it was last year I mean these this all looks the same these are things and these are just canned animations that we see in Madden each and every year it's canned animations like if he is getting if a player is getting tackled by, by another player and you have five other guys run into that, the tackle still goes through the animation regardless of whether he's being touched by other guys or not. These are all things that you expect in a football game. If I'm not, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. These are these, This is not really giving me anything to really go, go with on this game. Okay, they talk about the noise and how it's hard to hear and this and that. Okay, but those are just going to be animations. What effect is that really going to have on the game? Is your quarterbacks uh, and receivers timings or, or the timing on routes going to change because of the noise? Because you can't because the receiver maybe can't hear when the ball is snapped. And so he's late in running his route. So he may be late and actually like getting to a spot. 
Uh, is the quarterback going to be, you know, is his release timing going to be any different because he's shook? I mean, come on. I, these are things that that you can actually show us and say, okay, that's how the game's affected, affected by this aspect of football, which you can argue is realistic. But in this, they just talk about it being loud. Now, to kind of like supplement that in, in, the, in the trailer, which, again, this is a sizzle reel, folks. It's not really anything that is, uh, shall I say, indicative of actual improvement in the game itself. Uh, and then let's take a look at this. 662 likes to 1,700 dislikes. Uh, so, you know, clearly there is a, a vast majority of people, more than double, who feel like this is just nothing, this is nothing really noteworthy. This is not really showing us anything, so we don't like it. It's down votes. They're, they're, they're ratioed here. The ratio. Now, let's move over here. Madden NFL 22. This is by IGN. And, you know, look. EA works with these mainstream, uh, you know, mainstream video game media websites. And, you know, they're going to have uh, a complete expose that that is obviously going to try and favor what EA is doing. Uh, so we have here 10 major improvements as EA reveals this year's release. Home field advantage, franchise improvements, and other new features highlight this year's update. Uh, like most games in 2020, blah, 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 COVID, blah, 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 COVID, blah, 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 blah. Fast forward to 2021, and EA is now fully settled into PS5 and Xbox Series X, allowing... Uh, the team to begin weaving some more ambitious changes in Madden 22. Key among them is home field advantage, a feature that has been neglected in past years. While Madden has typically been able to capture the feel and look of a stadium like Seattle's Lumen, Lumen Field, uh, where ear-shattering crowd noise makes it impossible for a quarterback to even hear themselves think, none of that is translated into the actual gameplay. Uh, that will finally change in Madden 22. Now, away teams forced to play in notoriously difficult stadiums like Lumen Field will see their play art waved dangerously. Wow! Did they really just recycle the noise, the, the noise uh, feature from NCAA uh, college football with the play art squiggling around <sighs> with some of their receiver buttons hidden? Yeah, that's it. EA is calling this feature... Uh, calling such feature M factors. <laughs> oh my God. Come on. Come on. Special advantages enjoyed by all 32 teams that will activate depending on the momentum of the game. Yes, even the Chargers, no notorious for having more away fans than home fans in their stands, will gain an offensive boost if they are doing particularly well at home. Sounds familiar, maybe because NCAA football 14 had similar feature back in 2013. Going to a stadium like Alabama would even produce the same wiggling play art. Gameplay producer Clint Oldenburg acknowledged the similarities during EA's briefing earlier this week. It has its origins in what we did in NCAA football for sure, but it's modernized. One of the key pieces of feedback we received in NCAA football was that it was a little ambiguous and wasn't clear when you unlock certain things. So that's what we really attacked with game day momentum. Oh, man. That... is terrible. Why? Because well, when you look at this, if you if you if I'm understanding him correctly, in it being modernized, it just means that they're going to actually add graphics or add notifications into the game as to when this certain uh certain feature has been unlocked. So you might see like you did in the trailer, the quarterback backing up, touching his helmet, acting like he can't hear, uh which maybe you get I mean I, would, I, would, I mean, okay, let's, this, this, is, this is my positive side. Maybe that means that your offense gets out of the huddle later than usual so you have less time to make audibles at the line of scrimmage. That would be a tangible gameplay feature that affects how someone has to play the game. If my team comes out of the huddle with only 10 seconds or 11 seconds, you know, under 15 seconds left on the gameplay clock, which generally in the NFL, an efficient offense that is running according to plan, Breaks the huddle around the 17 second mark, 17 or 18 seconds. You break the huddle so that you get to the line and you've got around 12, 12, 13 seconds to make any audibles uh, and to make a check if you got to make a check. 
when you're playing in a place like Seattle, generally you can probably shave a second or two off of that uh, from your regular opera, uh, 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 you know, uh, level of efficiency in operating. And you might have one or two seconds less, but you're still okay. Now, if you're disrupted and the coaches are disrupted, usually that happens when you're getting, when you're going through some, uh, uh, ad, uh, uh, some adversity throughout the game where maybe it was a sudden change. Maybe it was a, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a sack, something that kind of puts you behind schedule on offense. Uh, your play may come into the huddle at the time you're supposed to be breaking the huddle. So you may get in your, you may get the play around 18, 17 seconds and you break the huddle around 15, 14 seconds. You get to the line and there's 10 seconds left. If you have any motions or any kind of, uh, of, of, of movements on the line of scrimmage or checks that you need to make based on different coverages or different looks, if you have to make anything like that, you have to do it fast because you're going to be down inside five seconds by the time you're ready to snap the ball. And a lot of times a good defense that knows that you're rushing will disguise and then un, you know un, and then show or reveal their coverage or change their coverage in the last 5 seconds which may cause a quarterback to actually kind of panic and try to get off another check because now that defense has switched into a look that's not good for this play so that puts you at a position where you might mess around and get delay a game because now the quarterback's rushing. That also means that your, uh, your the chances of an offensive lineman jumping off sides if you don't go through the cadence, you know, in a in a in a non panicked fashion, that lineman might jump trying to get a jump on the snap, or he might be a little fidgety at this point too because he knows the clock is low and it's him versus this defensive end who is a three time Pro Bowler and he doesn't want to get beat on this play. So there are a number of different variables and scenarios that can play out because of noise in a stadium. What I just described is what would make sense to do with that if you wanted to implement it into a game. Let's see if there's more here that explains it. Okay. Game day momentum refers to a meter that swings to one side or another depending on the flow of the game, which perks with perks being unlocked for the home team when they are playing well. The Seahawks, for example, have three levels of home field advantage. The 12s, which distort play art. Unstoppable, which prevents home teams from being knocked out of their X-factors or superstar ability. And nerves, which result in, which result in receiver icons being hidden. No, none of that. Rehashes of old perks from old games. That's what we're getting here. Home field advantage also varies from team to team, with stamina being an issue in Denver. Kicking meters go Ari in uh, go Ari in Chicago. Q visions of the infamous double doink. Instead of actually thinking through a small process and understanding how a team is affected on the field in real time, when you factor in the noise. Uh, of a stadium. And when you when I'm talking about that, you're talking about an away team coming in and playing in a stadium like Seattle. In real life, as I just explained, these are the things that happen that can cause problems for the offense. What EA Sports has chosen to do here is they've chosen to just rehash old factors, old perks that supplement X Factor and superstar abilities, which is a monetized uh, uh, portion, a monetized, basically a monetized part of uh, Madden football through their, you know, through through Madden Ultimate Team. They've added nothing to the actual game in sense in, in in regards to football itself and how it really affects football players on the field. Squiggly play art. What is that supposed to, supposed to represent in real life for a football player? Do you think because the stadium is loud that the receiver doesn't know what route he's running? Why would he be confused on the route and why would the quarterback be confused on the route? Those are not things that really factor in 
to the effect that noise in a stadium can have. It just doesn't happen like that. In terms of momentum, momentum should really solely be based on the ability to accomplish certain many milestones within the game itself. That's having a four yard or better, uh, four uh, yard per carry average in the run game. That's having, you know, uh, at least six explosive plays throughout the game. When you talk about explosive plays, you're talking about plays that go for 20 yards or more. Uh, you know, third down conversion rate. Those should be things that play into an offense's ability to get more efficiency from their blockers, from their receivers and their route running. If you're going to apply that into X factor and superstar abilities, then you can give even players who are not, who do not have X factor or superstar abilities, should be able to actually access certain perks from superstar and X factor ability. If an offense is performing at a, in a way that is realistic in, in, in the, the uh, percentages game in the NFL, if you're a team, in, in the NFL that uh, is top in the league in red zone efficiency, which means when you're inside the 20 yard line, you are, you know, you score X amount of touchdowns versus X amount of field goals and X amount of, of failures. So let's say a number, you know, a top team in the NFL, a team that is the best in the NFL is probably sitting anywhere from like 85 to 95% in their red zone efficiency as far as uh, scoring touchdowns, touchdowns versus times in the red zone. So in some games, you'll see a team, a team that's really dominant. You'll see in uh, one game, if they're in a game, they're, you know, if they're having a great game, they are usually, you know, three for three, four for five, five for five. You know, generally they're right there, damn near perfect in the red zone. I feel like if you're going to apply that realistic, that, that statistic, and that measure of an offense's, uh, you know, efficiency, if you're going to apply that correctly in a video game, I feel like every player on that offense, once you're inside the 20-yard line, should receive a stat boost based on what week of the season it is. So a very small boost early in the season, but as you go deeper into the season, if they maintain that high ranking, then you should see a bigger stat boost for certain players, but you should see a stat boost period, for all players, because that team uh, is, has consistently operated at a high clip in the red zone. That is a tangible change if you wanted to look into some of these perk systems that they have. But it shouldn't apply through the whole fee or for any certain time period. It should apply based on the football scenario that they're in and how that football, how the team has performed in those scenarios uh, throughout the course of the season, throughout the course of the game, uh, then you can look at giving boost in that. If you have a team that is one for five on third down, then you know they should lose stats. You always want to be above 50% in third down conversion. Always. If you're not, it's like you're not going to win, generally. So if you're an offense that is two for six on third down, on anything, and, and all your third downs have been third and six plus, then any third and six plus from that point on, at least until halftime, you should your team should lose stats. Similar balance concerns arose when X Factors were introduced in Madden 20, but Madden has largely managed to keep them under control. In fact, strip away uh, the bugs, wonky sideline detection, and weird animations, and Madden is actually, okay, who is writing this? Who is writing this? Katie Bailey. Let's see. What do you what do you generally write about here? Okay, so you got two Madden art, two football articles, so two sports. Okay. Okay, so I see two sports articles here out of, I don't even know how many, going back to 2013. Two sports articles. Why is this person writing about Madden? Pretty enjoyable football game, huh? Holy fucking shit. All right, let's start. Uh, so we got a coaching trees being introduced outside of home field advantage. Another feature that Madden 22 is seemingly lifting from NCAA 14. So, okay, now we're seeing the, the pattern develop. They're just taking the best 
things out of NCAA 14 and bringing them into Madden, which I don't inherently necessarily have a problem with, but Let's read on. The ability to hire offensive and defense coordinators and improve them through a skill tree. Okay, so they're literally, okay, 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 okay. <clears throat> it's a long requested feature that should add a solid layer of depth to franchise mode. As for its inspiration, executive producer Sean Grady says Madden isn't looking toward NCAA football. Honestly, their influences are more rooted in the games like, more influ what? Honestly, their influences are more rooted in games like God of War. Uh, my son and I have been playing it a lot. What? What? Why Why is... Their influences are more rooted in games like God of War? <sighs> Shit. Why are you drawing influence from games like God of War instead of drawing influence from people who play football? Scouting will be updated. Scouting has been another sore point for franchise mode. And fans will be happy to know that it's finally being overhauled in Madden 22. It's just not happening right away. Whoa, it says scouting will be updated later. <laughs> I mean, this is this is everything we're talking about. Why? Why even announce this? Oh. So scouting has been another sore point franchise mode and fans will be happy to know it's being overhauled man 22 it's just not happening right away uh grady says the team considered pushing the update to madden 23 but decided to make it a part of a live update we've been treating the whole game and certainly not just the franchise like a live service that's the problem uh <laughs> so we said well let's continue to work on it and get it out you know close to the nfl season in that september time frame so the fans have it this year we don't want it this year if it doesn't work. Make it work. Make it work. These are the things that fans are tired of. We're tired of getting games that aren't done. This is a sports game, and they're already showing us and telling us that it's not going to be done when we get it. Why does this continue to be the scourge of video games? This is thing, These are things that investors control from, for that company. So I don't get mad at the people making the game when I talk about this. This is the type of thing that investors control. When it does arrive, it will feature elements like a dynamic draft board that changes throughout the year. Okay, it's not even a feature that makes a damn difference to the actual game in the mode where you play actual football. Doesn't even matter. A key criticism of Madden's franchise mode in recent years has been its scenario engine. A one-dimensional attempt to add a bit of storytelling to each game, usually in the form of accounting for other team star, other team star player. In response, EA hired a community member to build up the engine, and they have responded with some 35 new scenarios. This year, we hired somebody out of the community who was super passionate about this, taught him the tool, and allowed him to create, I think, some really compelling scenarios. Grady says, I think you're going to enjoy the refresh. What? Wait, 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 wait. Does anybody understand? Does anybody know what they're, what they're talking about here? Again. God damn. Again. What does that have to do with the football game? The game where I hit the buttons and I'm running with the guy. What? <laughs> Halftime adjustments will add a bit of realism to the flow of the game. <laughs> why? Why would this be a bullet? Why is this a bullet point? Why is this a bullet point? What? What? Franchise mode is long. Feature the ability to choose certain plays to emphasize before the game. I don't remember that. If you're able to pick your favorite plays before the game, I mean, okay, whatever. But... What is, what is this, how does this affect the, like, what is this doing in the game is my question. Unless you're just simming it and you're just playing coach mode, I don't know what that really, what that really does. That doesn't mean anything. This is what, this is a $4 billion product. That's what Madden is. And, oh my God, Super Bowl presentation will finally be different. <laughs> the fact that they even, that the, the fact that they have to mention this is just pure embarrassment and an embarrassment for a company like EA. These are all aesthetics. This has nothing to do with gameplay. Back in the days of Madden 12, crowd close-up shots were a major part of the game's presentation, only fading away with PS4 and Xbox One rolled out. Crowd close-ups ironically returned to Madden 21, and now Madden 22, 22 is enhancing them with so-called super fans, cosplaying fans who serve as a sort of team mascot. Get the fuck out of here. This is, this is absolutely like 
useless. Everything that I read there is that is being listed as improvements does not altogether do not even come close to being something you can label as a major improvement. Not any part of it. And look, I want to see Madden become a better football game because it's the only football game we got. 